They shock, startle, scare, and unsettle. Here comes the boogeyman. Don't let him come too close to you. He'll catch you with the can. 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 Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movie demons. I am the way. <laughs> for this list, we're looking at demons that have transcended their films to impact culture as a whole. While demon has a loose definition, we're including entities that originate from a world of ill repute. Whether that's hell, purgatory, or some other frightening netherworld that defies explanation. Anything I ought to know about? Just trying to take your advice, that's all. With that in mind, beings that would be described solely as boogeymen, ghosts, or run-of-the-mill monsters are excluded. Also, representations of Satan are not eligible. A spoiler alert is probably in order. I'll swallow your soul! Come get some. Number 10, Annabelle's Demon, The Conjuring Franchise. It was a big mistake acknowledging this doll. Dolls are just inherently unsettling. Combine that with demonic possession, and you have one scary franchise. When the music stops, you see him in the mirror standing behind you. The Conjuring and Annabelle expanded on the haunted doll mythos by drawing from the supposed true story of Annabelle, a doll that the famous ghost hunting duo The Warrens came across. But firstly, there's no such thing as Annabelle, and there never was. Ghosts don't possess such power. I think what we have here is something extremely manipulative. The previous owners brought the doll to them after they observed it moving on its own. Because of its malicious tendencies, the Warrens concluded that this was the work of a demon, and not a little girl's spirit as originally presumed. And so the story was immortalized in film, making Annabelle a doll household name. What do you want? What do you want me? Number 9. Krampus, Krampus. Mom? Probably just squirrels. The Krampus is Santa's antithesis. Instead of supplying presents and goodwill to children at Christmas, the Krampus tortures them and kidnaps their loved ones. This terrifying concept, most likely deriving from Germanic pagan folklore, sets the basis for the 2015 film Krampus though the big screen story has a slightly comedic tone. It's, it's Beth. She went to her boyfriend's earlier and she hasn't come back yet. See? Let him out of your sight for one second and boom, shotgun wedding. Although some may refer to the creature as a boogeyman, the Krampus is also described as a large horned half goat, half demon figure that drags those without Christmas spirit to its netherworld. Most adult viewers were too jaded to be afraid of Krampus, but children who hold Christmas sacred were shell-shocked by the film. I'm sorry. I just wanted Christmas to be like it used to be. Number 8. Hellboy, the Hellboy franchise. So what do you say we work this out in a nice, peaceful... Oh, crap. The odds were against Hellboy from the beginning. Born to a witch mother and a demon father, and summoned from hell as an infant by Nazi occultists, he wasn't expected to live a decent life. You killed my father. Your ass is mine. Uh, boom! But Hellboy did just that, becoming a hero who protects the world from evil beings, both supernatural and not. I'm not a very good shot, but the Samaritan here uses really big bullets. Originally a comic book character, Hellboy translated to film perfectly. Thanks to Ron Perlman's portrayal and Guillermo del Toro's directing, the Hellboy series is one of the most original takes on the superhero genre. Give it up, pal. Huh? Tell them. I wouldn't do that if I were you. If only we could get that third movie. See, not all demons are so bad. What's going on? What's going on? I quit. Number seven, The Cenobites, the Hellraiser franchise. The box. You opened it. We came. Originating in a Clive Barker novella, The Cenobites made their film debut in Hellraiser in 1987. 
They are descendants from a hell-like place in which torture is tantamount to breathing. We'll tear your soul apart. Each Cenobite is terrifying in appearance and distinctly disfigured, as their leader Pinhead was not named facetiously. A trick us again, child. And your suffering will be legendary even in hell. It is an unassuming gold or brass-trimmed box that lets them reach Earth, which never bodes well for whoever opens it. The Cenobites then take them to what we humans would perceive as a netherworld to partake in an eternity of transcendental suffering. I've come for my father! <laughs> Is in his own hell, child, and quite unreachable. I don't believe you! Of note, Pinhead and his fellow Cenobites were not initially confirmed to be demons, but they were progressively presented as such as the Hellraiser series went on. There is no good, Monroe. There is no evil. There is only flesh. Number six, Bagool, or Mr. Boogie, the Sinister franchise. Bagool, the eater of children. <laughs> Did you say eater? Yes, uh, uh, of children. Bagul is a newer addition to the demonic Rolodex, but its appearance and occupation has bolstered its reputation. I made a mistake. We should have never come to this house. We have to leave now. It's a frightening, soul-stealing demon that attaches itself to movie footage shot by the children it possesses. These films capture the children murdering their own families, as dictated by the one they call Mr. Boogie. This is a cycle that repeats from family to family after each one discovers the ever-expanding reels of film. Nobody ever comes out here. That was terrible what happened. When each killing is complete, the pagan Babylonian deity takes the children to its realm for unending servitude. Sinister is right. If an image was destroyed, then the gateway would be closed and Bagul would no longer have access to this world, right? Mr. Oswald, what kind of book are you writing exactly? Number five, The Balrog, The Lord of the Rings franchise. The Balrog, the demon of the ancient world. Balrogs are the demons of J.R.R. Tolkien's mythological world. They are subservient to the prime Dark Lord known as Morgoth and reside in the depths of Middle-earth. Though referenced in most of the books, it's in the film version of The Fellowship of the Ring where the main characters encounter one of these creatures. Go back to the shadow. The Balrog appears as a giant, fiery, whip-wielding monster, and its battle against Gandalf is, to use a cliched word, epic. You shall not pass! The Two Towers shows us the result of this battle, and its accompanying twist is the best in the trilogy. Gandalf! What is it, Mr. Furrow? Number four, Lamia, Drag Me to Hell. I believe what plagues you is the Lamia. Lamia, that's the word the old woman used. Gypsy curses are low on the list of things we wish to happen to us, and Drag Me to Hell elucidates that sentiment. For the first three days, the Lamia appears as a nasty spirit that torments its victim. After that, it reveals itself to be a taker of souls. After a bank employee refuses a request for an extension on a mortgage payment from a gypsy woman, she becomes the victim of a curse that summons Lamia, one of the most vengeful and persistent demons in film history. You chase me, you black-hearted As is custom, the Lamia subjects her to severe psychological torture, despite all attempts to undo the curse. I don't want your cat, you dirty pork queen! After three days, the demon does as the title prophesizes, and we do not want to imagine what happens after that. You will be surprised what you'll be willing to do when the Lamia comes for you. Number three, Deadites or the Kandarian Demon, the Evil Dead franchise. Slay the beast to the Deadite! The Deadites are life forces, like humans, that have been possessed by the Kandarian Demon and serve as the main antagonists throughout the Evil Dead films. Yeah! 
the demon is initially summoned from the Sumerian version of the Book of the Dead, found inside the remote cabin. After being unleashed, it takes over humans' bodies by rendering them evil and zombie-like, and it affects all of the main characters at some point. Let's go. There are few limits to what the demon can control, and these parameters are tested by Ash throughout the series. The chaos that the Kandarian demon causes is truly unparalleled. I will feast on your soul. Number two, the lipstick face demon, the Insidious franchise. I can still hear that voice. For this generation of horror moviegoers, the lipstick faced demon is etched in their consciousness. Few characters have made such a startling first appearance, and this is due to the suddenness of its pop-up and the brightness of its makeup. We later learn that this demon is from a ghostly world called the Further, and it has a propensity for abducting children's bodies. This leads us to the penultimate scene in The Demon's Lair. Unfortunately, there was no replicating the impact of its introduction, as many people felt its climactic appearance, in which it's found sharpening its claws, lacking. That may be why it hardly appeared in the sequels. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Number one, Pazuzu, The Exorcist franchise. Where's Reagan? In here with us. During the early 70s, no movie scared people more than The Exorcist, and Captain Howdy was responsible. It's the power of Christ that compels you. The power of Christ compels you. Viewers couldn't handle the demonic possession and manipulation of a 12-year-old girl, as theater patrons reportedly fainted, puked, and walked out in significant numbers. Well then, let's introduce ourselves. I'm Damien Karras. And I'm the devil. Now kindly undo these straps. This demon, first proclaiming to be the devil himself, is eventually outed as Pazuzu. Though it is not named in the original movie. I am Pazuzu. Pazuzu terrorized characters and moviegoers for decades, especially those of the Christian persuasion, some of whom believed the movies themselves to be cursed and that watching them could cause them to be possessed. Once the wings have brushed you, you're mine forever. It's astounding that a fictional character could make such a real impact on society, and that is why Pazuzu is number one. All ye holy angels and archangels, pray for us! Do you agree with our list? What's your favorite movie, Demon? How dare you! Thou shalt not bow down before any graven image. For more hellish top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. It's a collector's item, supposedly. That's why we price it a little higher than the rest.